the mental and emotional effects of music. Do us a favor, think of your favorite song, the best song in the entire world. Maybe sing a few bars. Now, how do you feel? Good? Amazing? Better than two minutes ago when you weren't thinking about your favorite song in the entire world? Or maybe you're feeling worse because you're stuck at work and you can't blast it over the speakers. Well, today we're going to dive into the world of music and determine whether or not music has the power to affect your mood. But first, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell for more mood-boosting videos like this one. Because we all want to be happy, and who better to cheer you up than your bestie? They say that music is food for the soul, but can it really turn that frown upside down? Music has been an integral part of humanity, dating all the way back to our ancient ancestors. Mind you, they were consuming music very differently than we do today. More drum circles and less streaming services, but you get the point. Because music is so tightly linked with pretty much every culture, researchers have often wondered the purpose and if music really does have the power to boost our mood. Keep watching this video to find the answer. Hopefully you haven't had a breakup recently because they really do suck. But if you think back to a time when you were sad, what was one of the first things you did? Crank up the saddest song you can think of. You'd think listening to sad music would make you feel, well, sad. But according to research from Durham University in the UK, it actually makes us feel better and will bring you comfort. Is this bringing up memories of your emo phase? <laughs> yeah, us too. The weird part is, conversely, downer music can also cause those listening to feel extreme sadness and grief. Although, according to the study mentioned earlier, the majority of people who listen to sad music really do enjoy it. So don't feel bad about cranking up the Smiths. We totally get it. Depressing music is relatable when you're feeling low. And according to a study published in the Journal of Consumer Research, people will often turn on a sad song when they are experiencing a deep feeling of loss, like a breakup. The same study takes this idea one step further by saying that sad music not only comforts us, it actually feels like an empathetic friend, someone who really gets what you're going through. And when it comes to a breakup, music can often articulate what you're feeling. Sometimes it feels like that sad song was specifically written for you, doesn't it? Let's shift gears a little bit here and talk about something a little more upbeat, happy songs. You know that song Celebration by Cool and the Gang? If you don't know that one, where have you been? Go check it out. It's one of the most upbeat, exciting tunes that's sure to put a smile on your face. Or how about when you're just about to embark on a road trip with some of your pals? What's the number one most important thing? The music. The first song you spin has to be a banger, and you know it's gonna be something fun and high energy that gets you pumped for the road ahead. These are just real world examples, but if you're not convinced, we'll let the science prove our point further. In a 2013 study published in the Journal of Positive Psychology, researchers found that when people listen to upbeat and happy music, they could actually improve their overall mood and boost their happiness levels in as little as two weeks. There are significant benefits to being happy, says Una Ferguson, a doctoral student at the University of Missouri. She found that when you're happy, it's possible to be in better physical shape, make more money, and have better relationships with those you love. So if you need some help getting out of that melancholy state, try making a playlist with some of the most happy tunes you can find. With benefits like those, what have you got to lose? So when you're feeling sad, depressing songs can be the shoulder you need to cry on. Happy songs can boost your mood and may even enhance your quality of life, but what about the other stuff, the gray areas of your mood and dealing with the stuff that causes stress and anxiety? Well, there's a whole world dedicated to that. Keep watching and we'll dive in. People have been studying how music affects not only our mood, but the healing qualities as well. This brings us to the idea that music can actually help with rehabilitation. It's called music therapy. The American Music Therapy Association, or ATMA, defines music therapy as this, an established health profession in which music is used within a therapeutic relationship to address physical, emotional, cognitive, and social needs of individuals. 
After assessing the strengths and needs of each client, the qualified music therapist provides the indicated treatment, including creating, singing, moving to and or listening to music. Music therapy is a wonderful tool that really does help folks in need. The ATMA reports that programs like this can help folks in all kinds of ways, from managing stress, enhancing memory, and even alleviating pain. What? You, our wonderful bestie viewer, might be thinking, how can music reduce physical pain? Well, hang out and we'll tell you. In a 2015 review published by The Lancet, a weekly general medical journal, researchers found that people who listened to music before, during, or after surgery experienced less pain and anxiety compared to the patients who did not listen to music. The review goes on to say that not only did their pain go down, but their need for pain medication went down as well, especially when they got to pick their own music. See? Your taste in music is good, even if it's only good to you. Go ahead and blast those guilty pleasure songs. Don't listen to the haters. Dr. Catherine Meads recommends that everyone should have access to music before undergoing surgery. It's an easy, non-invasive, inexpensive way to help people through the process. And when it comes to getting surgery, who doesn't want something that'll help keep you calm and maybe even reduce the pain? But the awesomeness of music therapy doesn't stop there. The World Journal of Psychiatry found that music therapy can have wonderful results when it comes to treating neurological conditions, such as mood disorders, Parkinson's disease, dementia, stroke, and MS. Plus, none of those nasty side effects were reported in any of the 25 trials researchers conducted. Which means music therapy is a great, low-risk source for treatment. Keeping with the brain, Barry Goldstein, who is a recording artist and someone who's studied the vibrational effects of music for over 25 years, says that music has a serious impact on how the brain functions. Barry says that music can reach specific parts of the brain and actually enhance them. Not only that, Barry goes on to say that the power of music can awaken emotion and encourage new neural connections. At this point, bestie viewer, we hope you're feeling inspired. Music is kind of magical and has all sorts of benefits beyond putting you in a good mood. We now know a bunch of ways in which music can be just what the doctor ordered, but what about actually making music? You know, with an instrument. Dr. Anthea Innes, head of the Bournemouth University Dementia Institute, BUDI, put together an orchestra for people with dementia. The group consisted of eight people suffering with dementia, seven caregivers, along with students and professional musicians. The results they saw were pretty incredible. Dr. Innes says that the orchestra really helped the folks with dementia by improving their mood and self-confidence. Not only that, she goes on to say that the orchestra has been a life-enhancing project for everyone involved and that the project challenges the negative public perceptions of people diagnosed with dementia. The language of music is truly universal, whether you're just tapping along to the beat or shredding a wicked guitar solo. Music can really evoke something in all of us. It doesn't matter if you're the next Elton John or Lady Gaga. Just being around live music brings us together and makes us all pretty happy. Hey, even if the only thing you can play is the spoons, why not give it a go? It might not be the best song ever, but we're sure you'll have a blast creating something fun with your pals. Or hey, if cranking it up to 11 and singing at the top of your lungs in your car is your jam, then go for it. There's a song for every emotion or situation, and at the end of the day, it can really change your mood. So the next time you find yourself feeling glum, put on your favorite song and see what happens. And that's it. Are you in a better mood knowing music really is a great pick-me-up? Or are you inspired to try and learn a song on the guitar now that you know the benefits of creating music? What is your favorite song of all time? Why not post it in the comment section below? Who knows? Maybe you'll find another bestie viewer with the same taste in music. Enjoyed this video? Hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.